Hey guys, welcome to TechLogic Lounge. My name is Keith, and today we're going to be going over switches, specifically covering their role and function throughout the network. Now, this is going to help you understand your 1.1 portion of your CCNA. However, it's also going to give you some real-world scenarios on how switches are used so that when you actually get into your first job as a network engineer, you don't feel lost in the sauce. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments below what you guys want to learn about next. I'm a network engineer, I've got several years of experience, and I want to help you guys get into the IT field as well. I know it can be kind of scary, and it might seem like it's super confusing. Trust me, I know you can get there. I came from not knowing anything to being to where I am today, and I know you can too. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so what is a switch? A switch is essentially a device with several ports on it, which connect endpoint devices to it and provide network access. Uh, specifically, they operate at layer two of the OSI model. The OSI model has seven different layers in it and uh, switches operate at the data link layer, which is layer two. Now, what do switches actually look like? Well, I got an example for you here. We can check it out. Here we have an example of some Cisco switches, uh, several of them stacked together and you can see some are 24 ports, 48 ports, and some of them come with additional modules. You can get that and provide additional type of ports as well. Uh, you can see here we've got like a little neck gear one you may actually have one at your house and that provides you with several ports as well for network access now there's mainly two different types of switches you've got your stackable switches and your chassis switches so your stackable switches are going to look kind of like this here they're going to have a specific number of ports on them they may have additional on the right hand side and they come in either sfp ports qsfp ports or rj45 ports so here we've got the rj45 ports and those are going to be the type of uh, ports that you use to connect an actual ethernet cable into the same ones you would use to connect your laptop switches also come with sfp ports which are usually going to be uh, ports that you uh, populate with some sort of module like this which can provide you with an rj45 port again like the previous one above or uh, some lc sc or many other type of fiber connectors which would actually allow you to connect a fiber cable into that switch and connect it to an end device In our next slide here we actually have a chassis switch on the right hand side here you can see there's an example of one that doesn't have any sort of network modules in it and there's a few blanks as well as some power supplies and you can see here in the middle there's actually two control plane blades they're actually the brain of the switch so they process all the packets and the great thing about this is when you need to upgrade your device you can actually upgrade one and the secondary one will continue to operate so that'll allow traffic to continue to flow throughout the device once that one's done you can then switch over and upgrade the other one on the left hand side you can see this is that same switch however it's actually populated completely with all the network modules and of course the more network modules you have the more power supplies you're going to need as well which you can see down here that it's actually populated with four power supplies again the switches operate at layer two of the osi model and we've got an example of that here seven layers uh, data link specifically so they're going to be managing frames and they're going to be looking at the source and destination mac address of traffic so what does that actually look like in terms of network flow i've actually got an example for you all right so in this example here we have an actual laptop this can be any sort of computer laptop uh, you name it as long as it has a port on it that can connect to a switch which is generally going to be rj45 for computers uh, that's going to actually connect with one of these type of cables here in rj45 that then connects into something like a network jack. You may have seen these around your house or throughout the office, and they can come in many different variations. However, for this example, you actually are connecting this cable here into the port, and that port somehow makes its way back maybe through a network closet and eventually to an actual switch, which you can see here. In this case, we have a stackable switch. Uh, these switches actually can segment traffic so they can separate traffic. Let's say we've got uh, regular users and we only want them to be able to access specific things. However, we also have IT staff that need to be able to access servers. Well, we can actually uh, segment the switches utilizing VLANs or virtual local area networks. Now, what are VLANs? VLANs are a method of separating the ports out. So you can see in this example here, we took about eight ports or 12 ports here, and uh, we separated them out. And these are going to be specifically for the regular users. However, we took an additional 12 ports uh, on the other side over here, annotated in red, and those are going to be for the IT staff. Now, the IT staff laptops will be connected and then they'll be put on the IT staff VLAN, which is going to consist of this uh, subnet here, VLAN 200, uh, 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'm going to have another video covering subnets. Now, the IT personnel, they'll have a network address that's on that network, and the server will also have a network address that's on that network, and those IT staff can actually reach that server uh, because they're on the same VLAN. Now, the regular personnel could also have access to the server. However, they would require a router. Routers operate at layer three, and those are going to be what allow you to traverse traffic between each of the different 
uh, VLANs, or you can utilize a multi-layer switch, which operates on not only layer two, but layer three, and it basically acts like a router as well. Uh, however, in this example, we're actually separating it out where the regular users, they only get access to VLAN 100 and the IT personnel get access to VLAN 200. And so how this works in general, again, you're gonna have a laptop here. This is gonna connect with one of these RJ45 ports up to a actual wall port. And from there, that wall port is gonna have a cable which reaches back to the switch. Now, depending on the VLAN you're on, in this case, we're going to say that the this laptop is only on the regular user VLAN, VLAN 100, and it's going to have an IP address in this subnet range here. So it'll be connected into one of these regular user ports, and it will use its default gateway, which is its router, to be able to get to the internet. So that will then, the switch will then have a connection to the router down here, in this example, an ASR, which will have an IP address on this same network. So let's say the user needs to get to google.com. Well, what that computer is going to do is generate a packet and within it it's going to have a source and destination mac address the layer 2 address which is what the switches care about and also a source and destination ip address which is going to be what the routers care about now the switches are going to be looking at that source mac which is going to be this laptop and if you don't know what a source mac is it's the physical hardware address of the network card now each of these are unique and no two machines can have the same mac address so the switch is going to memorize that mac address and associate that port with the MAC address of the laptop, meaning any traffic that's destined for that destination MAC address of the laptop will be forwarded only out that port. Now, when the laptop actually needs to reach an external resource, let's say google.com, it's going to send out a packet. That packet is going to include the source MAC address of the laptop, which is that physical MAC address, physical address of the network interface card that's installed on this laptop, and it's going to send it out. The switch is going to learn that MAC address and associate it with the port that the, connect, the laptop is connected to. So when traffic goes to and from the router, the switch up to the router and back down again, the switch is only going to send that traffic to the laptop. It's not going to send it out all ports like hubs do, which hubs broadcast the traffic out to every port every single time, which include which increases network congestion. Now, each VLAN on a switch is its own broadcast domain. Meaning if a system decides to send out a broadcast, which is essentially sending it out to every single uh, device on the network, it's going to send it out and then repeat that traffic out every single port associated with that VLAN. Now, this can cause a lot of congestion throughout the network, which is why we try and segment our ports so that we only have broadcast for the IT personnel going to the IT personnel ports and not every single port on the switch. All right, so I know that was a lot, but trust me, just continue to stick with me. So again, remember, switches operate at layer two. They only care about frames. Specifically, they've memorized the MAC address of a computer. Now, a computer's MAC address is the physical address attached to the network interface card of the device. And switches memorize those MAC addresses and attach them to their CAM table, content addressable memory table, meaning it's just a table filled with a whole bunch of MAC addresses and they associate it with each port. So port one will have the MAC address of laptop one. Port 2 will have the MAC address of Laptop 2. When a switch receives traffic for Laptop 1, it's only going to send it out the Port 1 since Port 1 has the MAC address specifically related to that laptop. Now I'm going to show you an example of configuring a switch uh, to separate two systems utilizing VLANs and Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is a free software that you can download from the Network Academy. I'll leave a link down in the description below and you can actually configure emulated switches. Now this is a great resource for practicing and labbing. I use this a lot when I got my CCNA. However, I would recommend if you can actually get yourself a used switch off of eBay, you can find some on there for 20 bucks. It would be crucial for your understanding. I'm telling you, utilizing hardware is a lot better sometimes to so just get familiarization uh, specifically for when you're getting into the real world. All right, so let's get into that lab. All right, so in this example here, we've got two computers. Uh, one PC, which is dedicated to the IT department, and they're on VLAN 200, and this is their network address here. We've also got another PC here uh, for the regular users on VLAN 100. Now you can see the address, the network addresses are specifically different. We've got 192.168.0.0 for VLAN 200 and 192.168.1.0 for VLAN 100. Now, unless we have a router or a multi-layer switch in between these computers, they're not going to be able to talk to each other. And I'm going to show you that example right now. All right, so we're going to hop into this switch, and we're going to go ahead and enter its config mode. Do a show IP interface brief. 
So we can see we've got two ports, Fast Ethernet 1 and Fast Ethernet 2. Fast Ethernet 01 is dedicated to the IT department and Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 is dedicated to the regular users. So these ports need to be on their dedicated VLAN. So port 1 needs to be on VLAN 200 and port 2 needs to be on VLAN 100. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go config T to enter configuration mode. We're going to go ahead and first create those VLANs because we need them. So we're going to do VLAN 100 and we'll give it a description. Name, regular, if I can spell, regular user. Now we're going to exit. Now we're going to go into VLAN 200. We're also going to give that a description. IT user. Now we need to put those interfaces on those VLANs. So interface fast ethernet zero slash one. And we're going to see that's dedicated to the IT department. So we're going to do switch port access VLAN 200. And now we're going to configure that regular user port. So interface fast ethernet zero slash two. Again, this is the regular user, which is going to be VLAN 100. So switch port access VLAN 100 and now these ports are going to be attached to their specific vlans meaning they shouldn't be able to talk to each other because they're on they're on their own different vlans and they don't have a router in between them so now we're going to give each of these computers their own address and it looks like they've already got it so they've got a default gateway however there is no default gateway currently configured and you can see here, this one is given a, an address in its own VLAN. So 192.168.0.1, and that's a slash 24. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry. I'm going to have a subnetting video for you as well. And this computer here also is configured with its own gateway. However, it doesn't actually have a gateway yet because it doesn't exist in this lab. And its address is 192.168.1.1, which is also a slash 24. So these switches should not be able to ping each other, but we're going to see if they can, uh, just to prove a point. So we're going to do an IP config. And you can see this is the IP address of this switch, of this PC. And we're going to try to ping the other computer, which should be... One nine two one six eight one dot one. So let's see if this computer can ping that system. It's not actually reaching there, and that's because we don't have a router in between to allow these VLANs to communicate. All right, so we see here that those computers cannot ping each other, and that is because they're on different VLANs. Now, in order to give ourselves access to those VLANs and allow inner VLAN communication, we need a layer three device, specifically a router or a multi-layer switch. Make sure you stick around because my next video is going to be covering layer three networking devices, including multi-layer switches and routers and showing you how to configure those and how we would actually use them in real world. I appreciate you sticking around and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.